Medina with the Los Angeles Times, and we're presenting another edition of Lakers Roundtable, and we have a special guest joining us this time around, Lisa Dillman with the Los Angeles Times, who covers the Clippers for the newspaper, and the Lakers uh, playing the Clippers on Wednesday. It's the, the season finale for both teams. Um, obviously, Lakers fans are very well aware that Kobe Bryant uh, plans on missing the final game as the, as the team is getting ready for the playoffs. But I think it's safe to say, Lisa, that the Clippers are also looking forward to getting the season over with as well. Oh, I think so. Uh, it, they've been counting the days for the last uh, last couple of months, which which doesn't make a lot of sense. But I, I was talking to a player, I think it was uh, last week, and I just made some comment about two weeks left in the season. He said, no, 10 days. So they are counting the days, if not the hours. They have the exact days down, huh? They have the exact days, and uh, you know, I'm sure guys are guys have, you know, Thursday morning exit interviews circled, and uh, you know, golf perhaps in the afternoon. Obviously, it's been well documented this entire season. You know, Blake Griffin wasn't able to make any type of rookie debut this season. Uh, but where where did you see the, the season kind of unraveling? for the Clippers? I mean, what, when do you think was the starting point? That's a good question. Um, you know, it, it's funny. They started off slowly, just like they did last season, but there were glimmers of hope. And, you know, I, I think, you know, usually it's some, often it's very hard to put a finger on what went wrong and when exactly it all went wrong. But but um, this this is probably a little more identifiable than most Um it happened. Uh, it happened. Just it was like a span of 48 hours. It was probably the, the worst 48 hours for the franchise this season, which is, of course, saying something. But um, <laughs> they, were, they were in Memphis. We were all in Memphis, and you know, if they had won against the Grizzlies, they would have been at 500, and which would have been a pretty, pretty commendable feat. Uh, you know, third quarter is coming up, or and it's near the end of the third quarter, double-digit lead. I, I, I could look it up to see what it was, but. You know, clear, clearly they're on their way, and all of a sudden this, this alarm starts going off, and, you know, we're thinking, is it a fire alarm? Is it a bomb scare? You know, guys guys were thinking it could have been anything. I I, I don't even know. I just followed Ralph Lawler because I figured if, if wherever Ralph was going to go, it, it, we would be safe. So <laughs> <laughs> we're all evacuated out, out of the arena. He knows and, the drill. <laughs> he knows the drill, yeah. <laughs> and, um we're evacuated. Uh, we we actually get sent across the street, and we end up in front of this like Catholic church, which is just another, uh, you know, just just it adds added to the whole evening. And, and we're out there for about ten minutes, and it turned out like a water main burst um, and uh, flooded flooded an, 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 apparently an empty luxury suite. So once they figure that all out, I, mean, I forgot how much time went by. Maybe twenty minutes, half an hour. We all get herded back in. You know, the Clippers are stretching, they're shooting, and you just know this is a game. You know, anybody who's been around the team for a while knows they will pop. There's a very good chance they will lose, which they ended up doing. And uh, they, you know, they lose to Memphis. Now they're two games below 500. The next day they fly to New Orleans, and uh, in the middle of the afternoon, the players are getting ready. You know, probably taking their pregame naps. Uh, news comes that Blake Griffin is is done for the season and is going to need knee surgery. So it was just like the air went out of the tire right then and there, and um, that was it. To make a long, very, very long story, very long, <laughs> not short. <laughs> so season ended at that point, pretty much. I would say so. I would say so. I um, there were a couple other things that happened. I um, I was uh, my editors were kind enough to uh, let me cover the Olympics, so I I wasn't witness to every every last moment, but. You know the other, the other, the other, maybe very significant turning point was uh, the Marcus Camby trade. That that really uh, took sort of the you know, the emotional. It really took an emotional toll on the team. He, you know, he may have only been here. This may have only been, you know, he was here last season and then through this season. But 
he, he really uh, bonded with his teammates very, you know, quickly. He was a mentor to the younger guys. He hung out with all of them. And, and you know, you have a future Hall of Famer and, and a guy who can seemingly grab 20 rebounds at will gone. It, it, it really, you know, guys are still talking about it. Mark, Marcus said the team, team, mem- team members call him like every day. Asking, you know, asking, you know, and I, I said, are you, are you a therapist? And he, he laughed about that. But they, they sorely, <laughs> sorely, they sorely miss him in the paint, and they really, really miss him in the dressing room. Yeah, and obviously, I looked at the the record since his trade. They, they've gone seven and twenty-two. And in addition to you know, Al Thornton and Sebastian Telfair getting shipped out in a, in a separate deal. But um, from all accounts, including some of your reports, uh, kind of the thinking behind these moves was to, to clear enough room under uh, next season's salary cap so they can make a, you know, a run at free agent this summer. Uh, how do you assess the Clippers' chances with that? Oh, they've done a, they've done an admirable job job in clearing cap space, and uh, you know there's nobody nobody questions that. And uh, some of the you know financial moves have, have been solid ones, and it just obviously is going to depend on you know what what they do. They will you know they are poised to you know make a huge huge run, and um, you know they. I, I'm really I'm really not sure what will happen. I think you know that. They could, you know, as everybody's been talking about the marquee guys, but, you know, I could actually foresee getting, um, you know, a couple players, a, a couple players with the, with that money, you know, a, a couple components to add to it. You know, you know, the Cleveland, Cleveland people are, are more and more convinced that LeBron is staying. And, uh, you know, even the, the in my rosiest, most optimistic moments, you know, yeah, you know, you've heard the LeBron talk around that the Clippers thought that they could, you know, would, would, could possibly be players for him. But, you know, I, I never really bought bought into that at all. And, um, you know, I actually think he's going to end up staying. But, yes, yeah, so I think you're going to have that, you know, the, the big, big class of free agents and then, and then the second rung. So, you know, who that may be, I, I, I just don't know. I mean, they have so many question marks. They have nine free agents. <clears throat> And it's just going to depend on where other whether where other folks go to and what what needs they really think they have. Those nine free agents and and Kim Hughes being an interim coach, do you, have you gotten a sense of what their future entails, or is that too early to say at this point? I think it's too early to say. I was talking to um, you know a couple of players yesterday. I mean, I, I well, yeah, one was saying I have I have absolutely no idea what what they you know have in store for me. Um, had lunch with Craig Smith and his agent last week um, up in Beverly Hills, and you know, Craig is also a free agent, Los Angeles native, desperately wants to stay. Uh, you know, he he had some actually he had some really nice or interesting comments on the whole situation. He uh, he doesn't think you know he came from Minnesota, so he, this poor guy has, has had four horrible losing seasons and uh, five NBA coaches. But he doesn't think a, a complete overhaul is needed. He said, look, we have Blake Griffin coming back. We're going to get a high pick. Uh, you know, I think we need a few, just a tweak here and a tweak there. You know, he used, uh, you know, a car analogy, said um, just because, you know, just because we just need to fix the brakes. You don't need to just, you know, trade in the whole car. Although this is in the Toyota situation, I guess, right? <laughs> I didn't say that to him. <laughs> but, yeah, so he, he really, he does, he really wants to stay. And, uh, you know, he keeps saying, you know, not all of us, not, you know, you know, people think the, the team has given up and, you know, I haven't given up. And, and you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a, it's a, he pointed to Minnesota. He said, look, Minnesota's going through a massive overhaul and it's going to take them, you know, a couple, a couple of years really to, to find their way. And, you know, in Los Angeles, he, you know, I don't think a massive overhaul quite works, or it's not quite the way to go in the, in such a crowded marketplace here. Well, it sounds like uh, you're going to have a busy summer for sure, um, and the, uh, <laughs> even with the season ending on Wednesday for the Clippers, it uh, seems like there's much more in store after that. So I, I appreciate all your time, and uh, I know that everything's busy and will be busier as the free agency wins. Well, Mark, you, you were you were there with me uh, quite often uh, last season, so uh, I, I didn't say, you know, a lot has changed, but a lot hasn't changed.